Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Work with Brian Greedy, editor of Pro Farmer. Down day in livestock mixed in the grains. And Brian, nice to see soybeans at least uh, have an up day. You know, did we just hold support there? And, you know, how much uh, farther do you think we can actually push this going into the WASD? Well, you know, the funds are pretty heavily short, and, and so they could decide to actively cover short positions. In all likelihood, they'll, they'll cover just a few ahead of the report and then wait and see. Uh, we aren't anticipating a whole lot in this month's report. Uh, it's pretty typical for February, just some fine tuning. Um, so uh, there's probably no real urgency for the funds to actively cover shorts, but uh, given the, the size of the uh, short position that they have right now, they, they may um, choose to do so. We did have a little bit better export inspections. How much did that help? Yeah, it never hurts. Uh, the fundamental side of things, uh, you know, from a seasonality standpoint, we're kind of into the, uh, the we're past the peak uh, for soybeans. And, and so um, anytime you get some positive demand news now, um, export demand news, that's a positive. We know that the crush is running record strong. And uh, so when you get inspections numbers, the weekly numbers, the top to expectations, the monthly numbers for January top to expectations. And, and so that provided just a little bit of fun fundamental support. You bet. We're still under $12 on the March contract. A lot of that has been just on um, the basis play that we have seen the weak basis in Brazil, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And and so, uh, you know, there's um, reports out there that some cargoes have already been booked into the U.S. Southeast out of Brazil uh, for near term delivery. So second half of this month. And that's unusual coming earlier than normal. And it's just an arbitrage arbitrage trade. And, and uh, uh, so that's kind of just hanging over the market as well. Conab coming out with numbers this week ahead of USDA. Do you anticipate much change there in terms of the Brazilian soybean harvest or crop? Uh, they should come down on soybeans, I would anticipate. Uh, probably the bigger thing uh, from Conab this month is the first estimate for the Safrina corn crop. And, and up until this point in time, they, they just use basically uh, trend line numbers. And, and so uh, corn probably has more potential uh, for, for bigger news uh, coming out of Conab than soybeans, in my opinion. Monday, kind of a sideways day in the corn, but we kind of got, got caught there between higher soybeans and the lower wheat market, didn't we? Absolutely. Uh, you know, soybeans pulled to the upside through the day session. Uh, wheat futures extended their overnight losses during daytime trade. And, and like you said, corn was just caught in the middle and didn't really go anywhere. Uh, just kind of tethered near unchanged. Yeah. So we've been in about a 10 cent trading range there between 440 and 450. What do you think could break us out of that? Anything? Corn needs a bullish catalyst. Uh, and maybe it's that Safrina production. Uh, maybe it comes from the demand side of things where the market says, hey, uh, we, we have enough global end user demand now that uh, prices are cheap enough. We definitely haven't seen that yet. But I, I think one of those two things has to happen for corn to put a, in a major low and, and start to move appreciably higher. So that 440 support area, long-term support area, you think is going to hold for a while or not? Well, if it doesn't, uh, then we're probably moving down to that 425, 420 level. So uh, let's hope that it holds. Uh, you know, that, that's kind of been an area where we haven't been able to get below it too much, haven't been able to push above it. And, and uh, you know, if you can um, turn that into a solid level of support and then move up to 450 and turn that into support. Then you're talking about 470, 475 on a correction. And, and so you kind of stair step things up, but we have to do first things first and, and uh, turn 440 into 450 as support. Okay. Wheat market setting back here today, but it's actually held up better than corn and soybeans here the last week or so. So was this technical selling today, the higher dollar or what was going on? Uh, I, I think the dollar had a lot to uh, do with it, to be honest with you. Um, that and the fact that uh, uh, the traders decided to cover some shorts in, in the soy complex and a few in corn as well. And, and they're just, you know, let's be honest, this, this market environment right now isn't uh, conducive for broad-based uh, short covering. And, and so wheat kind of drew the short straw, so to speak, here to, or to start out the week. When you look at the combined short position in all of the grain and oil seed complex, Brian, this is what the second shortest in history. Will they keep pushing that side of the market, you think? Well, typically, uh, when the funds get so heavily leaning in one direction, whether it's short or long, um, that's when we put in major bottoms. Um, but you typically need a catalyst too. And, and so 
Um, we're looking for that, uh, whether it be in the soy complex and corn and wheat, a uh, combination of all those, um, that would be the strongest. If we get some sort of bullish catalyst, it's a combination of those markets. Uh, but we need something right now uh, where they start to buy with conviction, and we just don't have that currently. You said you do not expect many changes in the WASD on Thursday, right? Yeah, just minor fine tuning typically is what happens uh, from a domestic usage perspective. Uh, we know the supply side. So the only thing that can change on the supply side at this point in time is is changes to imports. Uh, I don't think the USDA will make those changes, any changes there this month. Uh, so just minor fine tuning on the demand side. What about South America's crop? What will they do there? Well, uh, they're behind on Brazil. Uh, they're well above what the private estimates are. So that could be uh, some potential major changes there. Historically, USDA has been slow to move. So I anticipate that uh, any changes will probably be relatively minor uh, in the grand scheme of things. And, and those estimates will remain above for both the, the corn and soybean production estimates above what the private uh, crop forecasters are. Uh, but that does have some ramifications ramifications uh, for the export side of things if USDA would make a major change on, on a month-to-month -month basis. I think it's probably going to be more gradual as we move through spring time frame and, and uh, USDA uh, lowering those crop estimates if uh, we continue to see the, uh, the pressure on that from a weather perspective. Cattle setting back today after a nice run. So did we just see some profit taking? Yeah, I think so. You know, last week's cash trade was strong. We knew that uh, uh, Packers bought a lot of cattle, uh, more than $2 gains in the average price. And so that's the third straight week up that we've seen in the cash market. In conjunction with that, we've seen wholesale beef prices fall. And as a result, uh, Packer margins are in the red again and, and pretty solidly in the red. And, and so that may slow down the cash advance a little bit. Uh, from a supply perspective, uh, it's still bullish. Uh, the cattle inventory report told us that the uh, not only is the cattle herd tightening up, uh, but will continue to do so through 2024 and into 2025. And, and so from a supply perspective, uh, we're well supported, um, but it isn't going to be straight up. So we're going to have these pauses. And, and I think that uh, maybe the cash market will pause a little bit this week, though. I do tend to uh, favor a firmer tone as we move through the first quarter here. Yeah. Plus the stock market was down today. Maybe that was part of it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that, uh, you know, traders didn't really need a, a reason to pull back, uh, so to speak, uh, kind of just a, a correction and, and the outside markets were negative. And, and so that uh, just kind of lent itself to, uh, to the corrective selling that we saw in cattle futures. Yeah. We also kind of ran up into some chart resistance, but I'm, I'm wondering as far as the funds, do you think they're going to continue to push the long side of this market again, because, um, you know, they're not that long in this market right now. Yeah, they should be pretty comfortable um, from a long perspective, uh, just, just from the supply side of the market. You know, demand, there's been concerns on the export side, uh, just didn't perform well last year, anticipated to slow down again this year there. But domestic demand hasn't been bad and, and actually been uh, probably outperforming what most expected it would. And, and so, um, you know, the, the demand side is kind of a mixed bag. The supply side is bullish. And, and so I think the market is well supported. Uh, we should see buyers underneath the market on pullbacks. Sure. And hogs, a lower day, we're kind of in consolidation mode there or not? Yeah, I, I think so. The premiums got uh, to the cash market, got a little bit rich. And, and so we've taken those out a little bit the past four days. And, and uh, we'll see where it goes from here. Um, you know, seasonally, the cash index continues to rise uh, since the beginning of the year. We've seen almost daily gains there and uh, it's just catching up. It's kind of been slow and methodical. We haven't seen really big days of, of gains in the cash index. And, and that's why the futures narrowed up those premiums somewhat. Now, we've been down for four straight days. And, and so we're probably at a pretty critical juncture. If we're down again uh, the next couple of days, you're probably looking at another 2 to $5 lower on the charts. Thanks so much, Brian Grady, editor of Pro Farmer. That's Markets Now.